Hey, it's Pat and Frankie from Engine Power, and today we're gonna do something that we have not done before, and that is answer viewer mail. We recently reached out to you guys for your deepest, darkest, most intriguing questions, and you wrote in, and today we're gonna answer them. The response was awesome, and we had hundreds of questions, so we whittled it down to 10, they put them on an iPad and handed it to us, so we're gonna do our best to answer the questions for you. Question number one. Can a solid roller camshaft and valve train work for a streetcar used for everyday driving? The short answer is yes. The long answer is yes, but there's more to it. We actually covered this in season 10, episode three of the show with our 496 big block Chevy. We went over the pros and cons of a solid roller street setup. And in our mind, it's mostly pros. There are a few more maintenance items you have to do, like check the lash every now and then. And it's a good idea to raise the idle RPM of the engine since a low idle RPM can potentially kill solid roller lifters. Plus we proved this on the street with our Granada. Full streetcar, big solid roller, turns a lot of RPM, but we drive it around like a grandma car, but we go to the strip and pound on it. So we know that it works. All right, question number two from Wandering Robot Studio. What was the first engine you ever worked on? The first engine I ever worked on was more than likely what well, was, it was a five horse Briggs and Stratton when I was about six or seven. And that's what really sparked mechanical, you know, knowledge and uh, that quest for it. Yeah. Uh, mine was a 3406B cat engine, a big inline six, like an industrial engine that you would find like a truck or something like that. I took a diesel program in high school and that was the engine that we rebuilt as part of the final. And, and you switched to gas, thankfully, uh, afterwards. Yeah, performance is, is the name of the business. Yeah, isn't? heavy stuff's not fun to work with, but uh, still, <laughs> I, I've done lots of that as well. So. Yeah. All right, question three is a twofer, it's two together. Uh, can you clarify what ring gaps you would use on different types of engines, such as boosted, nitrous, or NA? And do clearances or torque specs on rod and main bearings change for any of that? Also, what rules of thumb do you stick to regarding rod and main bearing clearances? You want, you want to take the first one? Yeah, uh, ring gaps, I'll do ring gaps. Um, so ring manufacturers usually have specifications for what their ring gap should be based off the cylinder pressure and horsepower that you're gonna be running. It depends on material, heat, power riders, all kinds of stuff. So the safe bet is to follow the piston ring manufacturer's specifications. And remember, a little bit bigger is always a little bit better. What about the torque stuff? Uh, yeah, torque specs don't really change. That's based off the fastener itself and the strength and the clamp load it needs. So those will not change based off power level. Now, bearing clearance. Now, bearing clearance is something that everyone has questions. Now, you can always look in a manufacturer's recommendation, whoever the bearing manufacturer is, because they'll have stock specs on what that's supposed to be. In performance applications, with most parts, you go a thousandths per inch of shaft diameter. So, if you have a two inch shaft, you'll use two thousandths, but you'll add a half to that because the stock parts sometimes move around a little bit more depending on their material. So, the better the material, the tighter you can run, about thousandths per inch of shaft plus a half. All right, question four from Cars, Cats, and Aliens. What a name. Uh, who actually uses everything in their pocket protector and who just has it filled? This is a, this is a big one. I, I think uh, we get this one a lot. Now, uh, I use everything in it and I actually have it on me. And this is what I carry in my pocket in this actual case right here. So what's in it? I have mechanical pencil, a pen, and a marker. We all know what those are for. Uh, reversible screwdriver, an automatic center punch, a scribe, an extending magnet, and a scale. I've been a machinist for 35 years, so uh, I carry this with me since probably about 1985, so I uh, use everything in it. I don't keep mine on me because I'm not insane, but uh, I have pretty much the same stuff and we use them all the time. It's just handy to have it there because otherwise you have to look for it all the time. That's kind of annoying, so I like having it right there. I have an iron flashlight too. Yep, I have a flashlight, Leatherman as well. Uh, so, oh yeah, Leatherman. Yep, use them all the time. All right, question number five from Marty. What are your thoughts on running a solid roller lifter on a hydraulic roller cam? A lot of solid roller questions. I, I like, like that. Yeah. Okay. You take part of it? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, yes, that is 100% possible, but because of the ramp intensities are different, you have to be a little bit careful doing it. It means you have to tight lash the actual lash on that load, plus your spring pressure is involved as well. Yeah, if you run too much lash, like say your your uh, solid roller lash is you know somewhere between 14 and 20, if you run that on a hydraulic roller, uh, the ramp start is different and the roller actually runs into the ramp and does a lot of bad stuff and starts wrecking things. So usually if you tight lash them somewhere in the five thousandths range, it will work and it will run. All right, question number six, we're rocking through these. Uh, Pat, you've had a long, long, extremely long, really long uh, career. What's something you know now that you wish you knew when you first started your career? I guess it would be that uh, a lot of things that I thought I had 
actual preconceived notions were not true. So that it's operating off of false data. There's a lot of false data that is out there. And now with the internet out there, there's, it's, it's even more so. There's, there's lots of good stuff as well, but uh, I didn't know that everything just wasn't written in granite, right? Everything's like written on an ice cube because it's gonna change at some point. So that's the thing that I, if I wish I would've known that uh, I just can't operate off of things that I think are verbatim. Gotcha. It also says here, Frankie, how did you become so attractive and good looking? It does not say that. No, it doesn't. No. It says, Frankie, what's the most surprising or unexpected thing about working on the show so far? Um, to be honest, it's 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 a lot of fun. I thought it was going to be like, you know, really hard work. And I thought TV was going to be really scary. And like, there's going to be a lot of lights and cameras and all this kind of stuff. But uh, we have a lot of fun making the show. We have a lot of fun doing the projects that we get to do. Um, so really, it's just it's a dream job and, and, and we really, really enjoy it. All right. Question number seven from Alex Blair two six six three. What are the different colors of plastic gauge for? That's a good question. That's a very good question. Now, plastic gauge is a great tool to use if you don't have a set of micrometers and a dial bore a gauge. It's very common to check your rod and main bearing clearances with it. And it comes in three different ranges. There's green, there's red and there's blue. Yeah, green is for ranges from one thousandths to three thousandths. Red is for ranges from two thousandths to six thousandths, and blue is for ranges from four thousandths to nine thousandths of an inch. So, depending on what you're doing, you'll use a different color or the different thickness of plastic gauge for your application. Now, if you're using blue on rod and main bearings, you might want to check that out because that's a little on the big side. Or you're working on a top fuel car. Or, yeah. Yeah. All right, we're on to question eight. So, we're almost through all of these, but. Uh, Ashley McBride, 1586, wanted to know, how many hours a week does it take to stay on schedule with season production, builds, trips, driveway rescues, etc.? Also, love the show. You two are both awesome and my favorite automotive show by far. Thank you. I've been watching since the original shows were on TNN, if that tells you anything. That's a long time. Sure, wow. that's not your mom who wrote that one? No, I don't think my, my mom watches our show, her, her to be name, honest. Her name's different than that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but thank you for watching. We really appreciate yes, thank it, you. for sure. And as far as production goes, um, it takes quite a bit of time. We work, you know, at minimum 10 hours a day, five days a week. Sometimes we work weekends if we need to, um, but it's a year round thing. Yo, no, it is. And because 80% of the work is done off camera. So if you see it built, we're the ones that did the work. We do machining, we do the parts planning. So with schedules, with we're just like you. Sometimes we are short on parts. Sometimes things just take longer than they should, but uh, you're never really working when you enjoy what you do. So uh, the hours aren't the big deal. It's, uh, we love to, we do. So uh, uh, it just whatever time it takes, it takes. All right, second to last question. Question nine, do you plan on doing more with import and Euro engines? Mm, excellent question. Well, nothing is out of the question for us, right? Because we are engine people. If it burns gasoline, we like it. And uh, we're about horsepower per cube. So, uh, I mean, I may or may not think we might have something, maybe. Maybe, I, the big deal is if we can run it and we can get it on the dyno, then we can do it. Uh, yeah, like he said, we're not biased at all. We like horsepower per cubic inch. We like cylinder pressure, no matter how that comes. Um, so yeah, we, we may or may not be working on a few ideas already, um, but keep an eye out and maybe you'll see. No, you need to stay tuned. Yeah, stay tuned for sure. Question number 10, 10. Codester688, see what you got. Do you think having more than one power adders on your engine takes more of a toll on your engine than having one power adder? For example, nitrous and supercharger combo. So I think he's asking if you have two different types of power adder, does that have more of a toll on the engine than if you just had one type of power adder? If those power adders add up to a lot of power, all the engine knows is cylinder pressure. All the parts know is how much heat and pressure gets put to them. So whatever's trying to be contained in that cylinder case and in that combustion chamber, in that cylinder, that's all it knows. So if it's one, two, five, naturally aspirated, doesn't matter. All the engine knows is cylinder pressure. Yeah, so it's kind of a yes and a no. If you're adding another one and increasing the cylinder pressure, yeah, it's gonna take more of a toll on the engine. If you're reaching the same cylinder pressure with a couple different kinds of power adders, the engine doesn't necessarily know the difference. It knows the cylinder pressure, the power it's making, and the heat it's producing, and the parts obviously have to be durable enough to, to actually live through that. So that's something that we take right. into consideration and all engine builders do when they're picking out the parts for their build. Yeah, the power kills the parts. So make sure you have the yeah. right parts for the amount of power you wanna make. So. Yeah, well, boom, that was 10 questions, 10 answers. Great success. Hope you guys 
uh, you know, enjoyed this. We had a lot of fun. We enjoyed it. You guys had some really great questions, I thought, so. Yes, please keep those questions coming. We loved answering these, so make sure you get on there and put some more questions on. We'd love to answer them. Yeah, and as always, keep an eye out for new shows. We're dropping new shows all year round, all the time. So make sure you're staying tuned, you're watching YouTube, you're watching all the streaming platforms we are, because there will be new shows coming soon.